An all-boys netball team is allowed to compete against an all-girls team for the state title. Now, the all-boys team wins every match, running up huge score lines, including a 30-goal victory in the grand final. All the while, parents watch on. They're angry, but they're powerless from the sidelines. Now, it all sounds like a bit of fiction, doesn't it? A Hollywood movie. That's exactly what happened at the Queensland netball titles earlier this week, where the all-male Queensland sons blitz their all-female competitors to be crowned the Queensland under-18 state champions. Now, it's been labelled crazy and unfair, but Netball Queensland is refusing to apologise. For her reaction, I want to bring co-founder of Save Women's Sport Australasia, Catherine Deves. Catherine, you may have been a netballer in your day. I was. Uh, I played mixed netball, but I don't know if I'd like to be in a team of women going up against a team of athletic men. Who in their right mind thought this was OK? Well, look, I was a field hockey player. But um, what I'd like to say is that when Netball Australia says this is all about inclusion, what who's being included here? Because it's certainly not the women and girls. Um, they're being excluded. Uh, they're being expected to yet again sacrifice their sports to make sure that men and boys feel included and men and boys feel good about themselves. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. And I'm, I'm not surprised that the parents are absolutely furious about this. And I am sure that if the girls were asked privately, they would also be very unhappy with what's happening here. Yeah, you're referring to a statement by the Netball Queensland CEO, Catherine Clark. I'll put it up on the screen for people. She said that we stand by the decision to choose inclusion over exclusion. Let's judge the decision in 12 months' time and see how many boys and men's team we have because if we can't, you can't be it if you go... Sorry, you can't see it if you can't be it. Now, I've no issue if there's a male competition, but why would you have a state competition that's predominantly always been women and suddenly bring the blokes in and have the blokes win the grand final 30 goals uh, to the women's team? That doesn't seem fair, fair to me. Um, no, when we watch women's sports, we want to see the best women and girls that the world has to offer. We don't want to see men and boys taking up space on the on the netball court or on the podium. And frankly, I'd like to say to these boys, they should have forfeited. I mean, if they wanted to play netball, they should have done what women and girls have always historically done um, over the years and decades and centuries of fighting for equality uh, for access to sporting opportunities. And we've gotten out there, we've done the recruiting, we've done the fundraising, we've built our own leagues. And here you have these boys going, oh, I want to be included, so I'm just going to jump on in with the women and um, I don't care about their right to fair competition, don't care about their right to safety, um, I'm just going to play. So yet again, we're seeing um, male entitlement, um, a, a lovely example of it here from Netball Australia. Yeah, and of course, women have fought for a long time in AFL to get a women's league up. I mean, if this sort of decision stands, you'd be putting men into the women's AFL league, even though there is already a men's AFL league, and you're taking the cause of women's sport back back by decades. I would have got another issue. The International Olympic Committee, they've delayed the release of the new transgender guidelines until next year due, they say, to an apparent conflicting opinion. But the IOC's medical and science director, Dr Richard Budgett, has reassured athletes that the guidelines will prioritise both inclusion and the avoidance of harm. How is it possible to do that if you're going to have biological male athletes again compete against women? Well, you can't. Um, quite frankly, as I've said, when you have inclusion of men and boys or men and boys with a special self-declared identity, um, women and girls lose out. Now, if you look at the principles of sport, fair competition, player safety and welfare and inclusion, you cannot equally balance those. And what the IOC are doing here is they're yet again going to prioritise inclusion um, and they're going to put the burden of giving up fair competition and safety um, on women. So it's just, it's completely outrageous. And they, they should just face up to the fact that they are prioritising the inclusion of males and admit it instead of mm. pretending that they're trying to be fair to everybody because they're not. Save Women's Sport uh, co-founder Catherine Deeds, thank you for your time. Thank you, Peter. Have a good evening.